everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to do my last album in the Bill Evans series that I've been doing. So this is the last one that I own. This isn't entirely his last album. However, it's the last physical album I own of his. I do have um, one CD set that I used to own that I have like in digital format that was actually called um, Last Waltz. So I do have that on, di on, you know, on my iPod. But this is the last one I have as a physical record. And it is really close to the end of his um, recording history and, sadly, his life. So Bill Evans passed away in 1980 um, at a fairly young age, in his 50s. Um, he, uh, as I've mentioned before, he was a, a fairly heavy IV heroin user. And ultimately, it, it killed his liver, and he died very young. From liver failure so but this is the last album that we're going to look at the last album I own of his and certainly hopefully as I get more albums as I go along hopefully maybe I can add to this series uh, but at the time this is what I have so uh, the album is called you must believe in spring now this is actually my absolute most favorite Bill Evans album off the Riverside catalog um, the, you know, a lot of the Riversides I do like more than this one, but at post Riverside, this is definitely my favorite um, album that he made. Um, you could see right there, it's got Eddie Gomez still on bass and Elliot Zygmunt on drums. This, I think, truthfully, is the best trio he had besides, obviously, the classic Riverside trio. I, I really, Eddie Gomez, I think, is the best bass player he was with you know, as far as chemistry between the two. And then I think Elliot Zygmunt really falls into that mold very well. Um, this is on the Warner Brothers label. It came out in, uh, I believe, 77. But you could see that WB label right there. Um, and then there is your track listing. And I'll read them, you know, I can read them off for you. Uh, it was recorded in Capitol Studios, Hollywood, uh, on August 23rd, 24th, and 25th of 1977, and then I believe it actually was released in 1970, either 78, or it may have even come out actually, um, no, actually it came out in 81, actually after he died. They sat on the, they sat on it for a little while, and then it came out according to the, uh, you know, the timestamp here. I'd have to check because I'm pretty sure this was a first press, but I'll look and make, you know, I'll double check uh, and see, uh, and I could put it in the comment to let you know. That's the original WB inner sleeve. So I actually purchased this record and it was still sealed. And I was very excited because I was like the first person ever to open it and listen to it. Um, and then I'll show you the label. Like I said, it's on a Warner Brothers label, um, but Warner Brothers labels look like that. So a very classic WB you know, Warner Brothers. So the songs that are on here, uh, it starts off with, you must believe in, uh, with, sorry, B minor waltz, which I actually, on the first side, I think is the best song. It is so, just the lyricism of Bill Evans on that song is gorgeous. And that particular song he wrote that, that is uh, his composition. And it was actually for his, um, domestic partner Elaine and sometimes later on it was called the Elaine Waltz. Then it goes to You Must Believe in Spring which is actually a Michael Legrand uh, composition. If you're unfamiliar with Michael Legrand he was a great arranger and composer of the 60s and 70s. He's got a lot of albums on Columbia and his probably most famous one is called Legrand Jazz where it actually has the Miles Davis group on it along with many other musicians um, but it's pretty well known because it's got the group that has Bill Evans still in Miles' group. It came out around 58. Uh, then it goes to Gary's Theme, which is by Gary McFarland. And then it goes to We Will Meet Again. And that one's actually a Bill Evans song for his brother. His brother it was named Harry. He was also a very accomplished, um, he was actually a music professor and uh when they were younger, they played a lot together. Then they both went off to music school. They both got music degrees, and Harry became a professor of music at an at a institution, at a college. And uh, We Will Meet Again actually is a title of another Bill Evans album uh, on the WB label, which is also a pretty good album. I did own a copy of that at one point, 
Um, but I, I overall felt this is a stronger album, so I decided to keep this one when I was, uh, you know, just as you know, if you collect records, you're always kind of looking at, okay, which one will I not mind if it goes to get something else that I really want, you know, and vice versa. Then we move on to side two. It goes to a song called The Peacocks, which is a Jimmy Rolls song. Uh, then it goes to Some Time Ago, which is Sergio Minhavoch, uh, or if, maybe it's Minovich, sorry. And then it ends with Theme for MASH, a.k.a. Suicide is Painful, which is a John Mandel song. So on this album, I think what is seen more than anything else is that the chemistry between Evans and Gomez, now it's been like seven years since the seven, eight, actually almost 10 years since that last album that I showed, which was the Live at the Gate, uh, Top of the Gate. So the chemistry between the two is so great now. They have that fluidity like Evans had with with LaFaro as far as how they can almost have two soloists playing together in a way. And, and they're, you know, putting out phrases and answering each other and countering each other. And what's great about Zygmunt is that he really falls, fell into the mold of what Modian did during the classic trio on Riverside, where he really lays down a time, but it's a very loose feel. And the drums never really, in some respects, you know, and in some instances, you don't even notice the drums are there, but he's just very light in the background, keeping the time and the rhythm. And, and on one or two songs, he definitely is more prominent and you hear him. But he really has that mold to play what the song needs, not to play what he's capable of in certain positions. And that's a really important aspect of a musician. You know, you look at virtuosity and it's a great thing. But after a while, you know, it doesn't serve the song to a degree. You know, best example I can give is I love Jaco Pastores. He's a, obviously, arguably the greatest electric bass player that's ever lived. But there are times when what he does is a little bit too much for what the song needs. Not so much on his solo albums, but example like when he played with Joni Mitchell. There's times where you could feel that tension between Joni and Jocko and the other musicians where Jocko's trying to get out everything possible and the other musicians, you know, are trying to just get out of his way in some respects. So, you know, sometimes Jocko on other people's re recordings can be a little bit too much for what the song needs. And it's a really important aspect to a musician to be able to play and serve the song you're playing. You know, you listen to great horn players. They step out when other people take their solos. They're not trying to step over other people's toes. You know, you look at something like a John Coltrane, a Hank Mobley, they step out when the piano takes their solo or when the drums take their solo. You know, they may add little flair here and there and little notes in between, but they're not overpowering the other musicians. And that's a really important skill to learn as you play with people in a live setting and in a band setting. And Elliot Zygmunt was great at that. You know, here's what I would say about this album. This is probably one of the most beautifully just the beautiful and peaceful albums Evans ever recorded. And it's not quite there with his trio with LaFaro and Modium as far as like the interplay and how well they phrase off of each other, but it is really close. I think it's the closest thing he records post that trio than any other recording that he has. And I think it's because of the amount of time that him and Gomez now have as a chemistry together. And that, again, points to the amazingness of that trio with LaFaro and Modium, that within a year and a half, they could have made those groundbreaking recordings and have that chemistry with each other that Evan searched for for the rest of his career, and I think ultimately found almost you know 90% of that with Gomez. Uh, but it's amazing how that trio accomplished that in a year and a half compared to what he did for the remainder of you know, the 17, 18 years of recording in life that he lived. So that will wrap up this series. As I said, um, this album is called You Must Believe in Spring, as I have it upside down. And I'm going to take a quick look before I upload it, and I'll put it in the, in the um, description if, in fact, 
uh, it didn't come out till 81 or if it came out earlier than that I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up and see because I thought this was a first press but um, there isn't any other uh, earlier pressings on Discogs I know of so but I'll put it in the description so that you guys can look it up and see so you have an accurate description of when this album came out so thank you guys for watching and I really appreciate everyone who's watched through this whole series and um, I will be back for some more videos. Um, there is an upcoming video that I'm going to be doing for the Blue Note uh, 4000 project, which I'm really, really excited about. So um, you'll see that up probably, I don't know, within the next two weeks. Probably I'm waiting for everybody in front of me to have their turns before I obviously upload mine. So, But I will definitely see you guys for that one. And in between, I'll obviously have some other stuff as well. So thank you for watching the whole this video and the whole series. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope everyone enjoyed this look at Bill Evans and, and so many of his amazing recordings. Have a great day, guys. I will see you next time.